Hello, everyone. Welcome to Breaking It All Down. It's E3, which means I've been doing this now for a year. So, just like last year, I'm going to be taking, giving my thoughts on the various E3 press briefings. Um, so, starting off with Konami. Um, well, this was canned. By which I mean, everything was all pre-recorded, all flashly put together, nothing was live, no chances for things to go wonky or weird or anything interesting like that. Um, now, the, the thing focused basically a lot of new titles. Um, we did get a bit of a developer profile of their San Francisco mobile social game studio. Um, and this was something notable there. The one thing I'd say that really stuck out was the fact that Konami is not publishing their own mobile games. Instead, they are develop they're developing them, but they're publishing a lot of them through Zynga. I don't know what to think about this. It feels like give me sort of all how the mighty have fallen response because I mean it's Konami. They they're one of the first big game developer Japanese game developers to really get a foothold in the U.S. with Castlevania, with Gradius, Contra, all these other great franchises from back in the day. I'm going to turn this light off because it's flickering a lot. Uh, it's... Six... Eh, leave the light on. Don't like the flicker, but I have not much of a choice. So, um... We basically get a brief look at them, and then we actually get onto the two new titles. We had a look at the new Pro Evolution Soccer game, which has some new uh, character animation stuff done, as well as new ball handling systems, which, if you play the Pro Evolution games, that, that will mean something to you. I don't, so not much useful. Um, I will say that did stick, uh, what did stick out to me, to me is the ability to intentionally foul your opponents in the game, which means that this series, if they weren't getting any actual soccer licenses before, they probably won't be getting them now, particularly not Major League Soccer. So alas, this means no way to play my beloved Portland Timbers, in, or play as my beloved Portland Timbers in a soccer game. Ah, uh, well. Then we get a look at the um, Zone of the Enders HD collection, which looks interesting. I have the first game. Let's find it. Ah, here it is. Yeah. I own the first game. Um, the second game is kind of hard to find, so I wouldn't mind being able to, well, get both games, have them look great, have them play on mo um, with modern controllers and either on the Xbox 360 and or whatever, and have online multiplayer with them, and just be just be able to get achievements and stuff and show off how awesome I am with, at these games with other people. So I am probably going to get this. I mean, the Silent Hill collections didn't do so hot, however, I've heard decent things about the Metal Gear collection. I guess it's a case of, if it's attached to Hideo Kojima, they will give it the effort it, it deserves, whereas if it doesn't, they won't. Either that or Konami's just stopped giving a crap about the Silent Hill series, which is unfortunate. Um, talk about the 20th, 25th anniversary of the Metal Gear series. Which, with Hideo Kojima talking about making the games and generally just causing me to feel old. That I am older than Metal Gear by a couple years. We have to make me realize how close I am to 30. Ugh. Uh, I guess we're here for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Revengeance. Whatever that new word they've created is, um, it's a character action game. It has odd bits to it. I mean, on the one hand, it's Kojima production, on the other hand, and Platinum Games developing it, so you can expect a certain degree of craziness. But there's a bit in the video which has a um, which has right in slashing this little mini Metal Gear, and it's bleeding like. Wait, bleeding mechs? What? Maybe it's a stock animation thing, and that's going to be fixed with later versions of the game. Because we don't see it in that other, don't see that many other mechs bleeding when Raiden cuts them. But on the other hand, if they're keeping that. Wow, we've entered a whole new level of the silly. 
Um, looks fun. Uh, we got make. We also got a Mega sixty four sketch. I haven't seen much of their stuff. I know they've been around for a while, but I haven't seen a lot of them, so I wasn't sure what to think. I saw the sketch. Kind of dumb. It, it, it's it is the standard bit of fictional character from like action movie stuff trying to hold down a regular job kind of thing. It's it's a, it's been done before. It's been done better. I mean. It's basically the premise of the old samurai sandwich maker and samurai plumber sketches from uh, Saturday Night Live with um, John Belushi, I believe. So, just go watch those and you get the same thing as the sketch. We then get the inside to play the One More Thing card and we get a look at Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, which actually looks very interesting. I enjoyed the first game. Um, I heard accusations of the game having some padding, but ultimately I had fun with all the levels of the game. I, I really, really did. Um, if you're, like, if you go look at my review of the game at uh, Bureau42.com, if you're watching this there, you'll, you'll have probably already read it. Um, you'll, you'll see I really enjoyed the game. Um, so I'm looking forward to more of this. I am interested that while they haven't gone all the as far into the future in this game as they um, had at the conclusion of the first game, where you, Gabriel Belmont is Dracula and it's in the future, we do still keep Gabe as uh, as Dracula, and it looks like it has you fighting against um, Alucard. So, I'm interested they decide to have you be a villain, a, a real villain protagonist in this game, where you are the, you are the bad guy. The, the humans attacking aren't misguided, or they aren't actually evil in their own right, they're just, they are good people trying to stop you. Or alternatively, I'm interested to see if we have two different paths to go through the game. The good, the basically light side path, if you will, with um, Alucard, with a different gameplay style, because he's not using the whip, he's using the dag, he's using his sword, on one way, and the evil path with um, Dracula, who do, who while he's not using the combat cross, he does kind of have a whip thing going on, and with the with going on with the whip that way. I was interested to see how this turns out, and I do hope they also get um, Patrick Stewart to come back and reprise his role as, as Death. For this, um, there's also a 3DS Castlevania game, but they don't go too much into whether this is in the Lords of Shadow continuity or anything else about it. We don't even see any like screenshots. We just see a little bit of concept art, not even like a whole piece, just little bits and pieces. And then we get to the Microsoft press conference. Um, by the time I'm recording this, we've had the Microsoft press conference today, uh, Monday the 11th. We have the um, Ubisoft and E3 conferences to come. Uh, Ubisoft and EA conferences to come today, and tomorrow. And there's also the Sony press conference this evening and Nintendo tomorrow. I will do those together, uh, the uh, Sony and Nintendo ones, because the Sony one is when I have class. Sorry about that. School comes before this, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, Microsoft. We open with the trailer for Halo Four. Halo Four, live action trailer leading into gameplay. A uh, live action trailer looks good. It looks like the ship that this game is going to focus around the infant the uh, UNSC Infinity looks like it's kind they're trying to do like this is the Halo version of the Enterprise. Um, like Enterprise original because it's a military vessel but it's on a exploration and science mission. So that's interesting. Um, then we get to the Master Chief who basically the situation here is not that Master Chief is on the Infinity, it's that he's investigating this other planet when the Infinity shows up and things get worse. Um, and, well, there's Forerunner stuff going on, which, not too surprising, but I'm, I'm glad we're getting into this bit of lore and fleshing out the Forerunners a little bit more, and what other stuff they might have left behind. We, not, making clear, not making it clear whether these bad guys are forerunners themselves, but they are. They act like or, like um, organisms and animals and that 
people and that sort of thing, but they are clearly totally synthetic. So I'm interested to see how this turns out because they're not the not the flood. And actually, this is the other thing is hopefully this game will not have the flood. Hopefully, Halo Four is All right. We're done with the flood. No more. We're gonna do something else with our bad guys, which is good. Um, there are some hostile covenant here. With, now, with the end of Halo 4, it looked like we had a truce between the UNSC and the Covenant. So I'd like to see how this turns out as far as, are these Covenant ones who didn't take part in the truce or peace treaty or whatever? Um, is this a case of a misunderstanding by the Master Chief? And in fact, these guys were part of the crew of the uh, Infinity. We'll have to see when the game comes out. Um... <clears throat> Next is a trailer for Splinter Cell Blacklist. If you read my review of the last game, I thought the plot was incredibly dumb, had a lot of real problems to it, but I still enjoyed the gameplay. Um, it looks like this one is dumping the conspiracy theory aspect a lot, and in fact even ignoring a lot of the narrative elements of the last game in favor of uh, a new plot, but preserving some of the gameplay elements that I liked, like mark and execute and that sort of thing. Um, the game appears to have Sam Fisher, Bla um, Sam Fisher back with Third Echelon and hunting down something called The Blacklist, which is a collection of terrorist stuff, which has a bunch of information about, I don't know, a bunch of planned attacks or something like that. We don't get into too much detail. Um, this gameplay trailer, for this gameplay demo, does highlight a new thing, a running theme with this Microsoft press conference, which is con which is connect voice integration in standard games. For example, um, one of Sam Fisher's tricks is to go, "Hey, you!" to try and lure a guard over here so we can take him out. Um, and this game has it so that with connect you can call out, "Hey, you!" and it'll do that. Same thing with telling. Grim uh, to launch an airstrike or something like that from a drone or other things like that. Lots of other games do this as well, but this is where we first we start seeing this going on. Um, anyway, the, the game looked a bit like Call of Duty Black Ops at the very beginning before we before we suddenly before we actually see Sam Fisher and we like the Mark and X and the mark and execute stuff going on. Um, anyway, Madden and FIFA are also getting connect integration. FIFA gives you the opportunity to redo your formations on the fly and cuss at the ref if you really want that yellow card. Um, Joe Montana came out to demonstrate uh, the play calling using connect with the new Ma with the new Madden. Make whatever uh, Madden sports talk foot at uh, Madden, but a uh, Joe Montana sports talk football jokes you want to make now. Just get out, get out of your system. Uh, get trailers for Fable: The Journey. Whoop de do. Um, Non-gameplay trailer for the new Gears of War game, Gears of War Judgment, which looks like it's a prequel because it's showing cities being destroyed. We have the Locust being an enemy again. Follows Baird. I don't know what to think about this. Gears of War 3 was a good, satisfying conclusion to the series. Now, this is from a different developer, People Can Fly, uh, who did Boldstorm, which I haven't played. Um, was it Painkiller? And Gears of War is much more, a much different gameplay style also than their more sort of wacky gonzo stuff from the insane weapons like a gun that shoots lightning from Painkiller and the combo system stuff from uh, Bulletstorm. So I'm interested to see if they can keep themselves in check with this one. Uh, Connect, we get a whole bunch of app demo stuff. Connect getting um, Spanish language support, a bunch of new video apps, um, Nike is doing a fitness thing with the Xbox and Connect, and they 
little nitpick I have here is they're showing this stuff off. They end up giving us some brief spoilers for for Prometheus by giving us a short snippet of the movie. Um, I don't know how big these spoilers are, but look, I'm seeing I'm seeing Prometheus this weekend. I like I've been trying to come in somewhat cold. I mean, I know some of the stuff, but I don't want to know too much going in. I want to be surprised by things. So, let me do that, okay? I mean, you want to show something cool, or a clip of some? You want to show a clip of something? Show me a clip of the Game of Thrones stuff from last night from the HBO Go software or something. Um... And you get Tomb Raider gameplay. Uh, long story short, I put this on Twitter. Katniss is Laura Croft, or vice versa. Laura Croft is Katniss. Laura Croft is still beaten, bloody, muddy, um, lots of moaning and pain, agony, and that sort of stuff. But here we actually see some actual gameplay as opposed to running and moaning and fear and agony. Um, she... Kill some dudes with a bow. No dual welding pistols yet. Um, we got some gunplay with a shotgun. And some other stuff like a parachute sequence, th parachute gliding sequence thing. I'm not sure, what to, still not sure what to think about this game. It really doesn't appeal to me. I, I like Laura Croft as a strong, tough protagonist who is capable of handling herself, who is generally not totally unflappable, but isn't afraid of a lot of things. Um, and will do will handle herself well in a fight and get stuff done. I like her when she's like that. I don't like her when she's cowering in fear, when she's constantly groaning in pain, and all this other sorts of stuff. When when she's acting like somebody like somebody who's in, in like a one of Jigsaw's obstacle courses or something from the Saw films. I or stuff like that. I, I like her tough. I like her when she's a interesting character. Well, it's not an interesting character, but a character who can handle herself. I mean, I know it sounds. I mean, yes, she's a two-dimensional protagonist, and to a certain extent, she's become major eye candy. But the thing is this: Nate, when you have so few female video game characters who are badasses, even if they're cliched badasses saying, okay, we're going to flesh the character out and give her origin, origin story by making her act much weaker than she ever has before, and essentially making her, even, when she, even if she's being active, still coming across as helpless, does not make her a better character. See, for example, all the reasons that people complained about Metroid Other M. With that game, they took a character who was a blank slate, but we could project their own thoughts about what the person was like in there, and instead basically eroded away any degree of toughness and independence and durability the character had by having her basically having to answer to a man in all things and constantly, and constantly basically going, Oh, the baby, the baby, the baby when referring to the baby Metroid from uh, Super Metroid and all this other sorts of stuff which just hurt the game and hurt the character of Samus Aran. I understand what Crystal Dynamics is trying to go for here, but I am really worried that in the process of trying to make Laura Croft seem as more of a real person, they will end up hurting, the character, hurting her as a character far more than they help her. And nothing I saw in this game to play demo dissuaded me from that. Uh, we get some more announcements. There's uh, Ascend New Gods from the creators of uh, Toy Soldiers, and it looks like fantasy Toy Soldiers. I mean, yes, there's a lot of... I mean, some of the stuff looks kind of God of War-ish and that sort of thing. When we get close-ups on some of the characters in the game, they look like they are deliberately designed to be, to look like paint, like well-painted miniatures, um, or well-painted figures, or action, whether that's action figures or, um, well, um, yeah, and action figures are painted miniatures. So we'll see how the game goes from there. I mean, I could see it being 
uh, basically like Fantasy Toy Soldiers without being the tower defense game the other ones were, because to a certain extent, when you play a, for lack of a better term, a Toy Soldiers type game, or when you play with toy fantasy figures, you play them in a different way than you would with toy World War II or World War I soldiers, as an example. Um, there's also um, the Twisted Pixel is a game called Loco Cycle coming out, which we have no gameplay on, so I have no idea what this game is. There's a motorcycle. Now, this is Twisted Pixel games. So that motorcycle could be anything. So, I don't know what that'll turn out to be. Um, there's the game Matter, which looks like the spiritual successor to Marble Madness, and is produced by Gore Verbinski, director of Rango and the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Again, we have no actual gameplay here. I don't know precisely how this will turn out. It could turn out a lot of interesting ways. There is the game Wrecketeer, with a W, as like destroying things. It's basically a knockdown blocks tower game thing. Kind of a bit, seems a bit like Boom Blocks. Um, I'm not sure thing about this one. It's it's it like it's primarily connect focused game, so I'm probably never going to play it. I do wish they picked a different title because I'm a proud owner of the PC um, game Reketeer, which is basically a translation of an indie Japanese R excuse me RPG, which is very fun, which is a very fun game. Is that um. We had a trailer and gameplay footage for Resident Evil 6. I'm a little disappointed by this, just because Resident Evil 6... I mean, it's, it's going back to zombies, it looks interesting, but there's one thing which, which concerned me about the gameplay that we saw. The guy playing the game was not going for headshots, and I not, wasn't clear about whether he could go for headshots. I know this is a case of you trying to blitz through the demo and not play properly, but if the game doesn't allow targeting of, you know, well, shooting zombies in the head, this actually hurts it dramatically as a zombie game, because the ideal zombie strategy, kind of, since your Type 1 Shambling Romero first appeared, was um, cut off the head or destroy the brain, like, by shooting it in the head. Uh, let's see what else. Harmonix demonstrated, um, actually, not demonstrated, but they did a trailer for Dance Central 3 with Usher coming out and doing a dance number, which I think was replicated by, which, not replicated, but I think was also part of a gameplay demo. I'm not sure. If it was, and they were doing the gameplay demo thing, and Usher was succeeding in the demo um, while playing the game, are they seeing him playing the game while doing his normal dance number? That, that is pretty good. It does give us that one thing which lots of people make fun of Rock Band for, where music, actual musicians can't do well at Rock Band because it requires them to, to play in a different style than they would normally, particularly guitarists. Um, that's interesting. And finally, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, which is in the future. The not-too-distant future in terms of 2025. But I mean, the OEC involves a terrorist attack on the G20 summit in um, uh, Los Angeles, involving a bunch a bunch of pilotless drones attacking um, the summit and attacking a bunch of world leaders. It, um, it looks like a Call of Duty game. We get uh, an on foot sequence, a turret sequence, a sniping sequence. And a vehicle sequence. Um, all of which are things which we had in the last Black Ops, except with different vehicles because it was set during the Vietnam War. I'll probably play it. I'll probably review it. Um, but it, it doesn't look like anything too different. Um, I will say this is a nitpick. Um, you would think in 2025, when doing security stuff for the G. 20 summit, they would consider. I was considering how, how ultimately inexpensive it is to do um, pilot, to create pilotless drones. You think people would anticipate a zerg rush of pilotless drones, among other things, during the, during such a summit? 
Um, like a, or is this just that security has just gotten so stupid that you could easily um, cover, like, do an attack of this magnitude without anyone getting clued in about what is going on? Because um, it, it's a big thing here. Like, see, like Los Angeles has to be evacuated, and buildings are collapsing, and so forth and so on. I'm like, wow. Um, you think somebody would have figured out this was coming before it actually happened? Maybe this will be established in the game that people are finding out this is coming, and this is just a group that's really well organized. I'll have to see in later installment in, in later installments of gameplay demos or when the game actually comes out. This sounds like a game where there's enough plot holes here though that I may that even when it just first has come even when it's just come out, I'll probably still want to do a full story recap of it just to rip this thing to shreds. And that's Microsoft. Um, I'll try to get the Ubisoft and EA press conferences online before the end of the day, as far as my thoughts on those, um, but I might not be able to, depending on time constraints, and whether I have time to record this kind of stuff and get it encoded and uploaded before I go to class. So, um, hopefully we'll see you again later today with this uh, another video, or tomorrow, or tomorrow with all of this stuff, with all this stuff for EA and Ubisoft, as well as Sony and Nintendo. So until next, until later. I'm Count Zero. Thanks for watching.